On Friday, April 29th, the Cardinals take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Arenado hits it down the left field line, hooking, gone! It's off the foul pole! An absolute rocket! That day, 25,000 fans, ages 16 and older, will go home with an adult puffy vest featuring the Slugger Bird logo presented by Bayer. The puffy vest is backed by popular demand on Friday, April 29th. For more information, head to cardinals.com slash promotions. Hey everyone, welcome back into Weekend Go Driven by Munganass. St. Louis Acura, Munganass, Alton, Toyota here on ClavesOnline.com. So far in St. Louis this year and well all season long, it's going to be a uh, celebration of the end of Wainwright, Molina, and Pujols' career. So we're going to look at it from the other side of things and we're going to look at the beginning of a lot of careers that are also starting in baseball this season. We welcome in from MLB.com. He is Jonathan Mayo. Jonathan, what's going on? Hey Joe, how's it going? It, you know what? I, I can't, you know, if we're as excited as we are here, I, I got to imagine there is equal excitement on your side of things. Hey, can you remember a year when this many top prospects were making their debut in baseball? No, uh, no, I can't. I mean, it's uh, there have definitely been times where guys have gotten up all in the same year from the top or there's been a, a top of the list that's been you know close to as good. But to have, you know, three of the top four, four of our top ten in in the big leagues and if it weren't for injuries you'd probably see Adley Rushman and Riley Green so we we would have had the top five guys all making their big league debuts right out of the gate um so they're off to a little bit of a slow start um but uh I'm not too I'm not too worried about any of them but yeah it's uh it's I don't want to say it's unprecedented but it's it's certainly not something that we've seen uh too much of over the years if we look back at the last two years of baseball and just how weird of seasons that we've had with the shortened 2020 season and then just all of the, you know, still the restrictions and some of the late starts in minors. Is this a is this because of what we've seen the last two years or is this just because all these ta- it just, you know, happy accident that all these talented guys are ready to go? I think it's more the latter. And you want to put in a little dose of the the new rules that sort of encourage teams to bring guys up rather than wait. I don't know that that's had a huge impact. It's more that these guys have been ready on teams that are hoping to, if not be, uh, you know, competing for the playoffs, be more competitive. There's some pressure there and uh, teams realizing that, you know, they just need to put their best, their best roster on, uh, on the field at any given time. And that includes those, those young guys, you know, it's definitely, you know, a little more normal after last year, you know, even with all the restrictions and the late changes, at least there was a year of data, so you got to see, well, what are these guys going to to do as opposed to after 2020 when most minor leaguers didn't even play? And I think that year has impacted guys in different ways. And we're not going to know for years exactly uh, what that that time off really meant for development. And I think it's going to be individualized, but they all got a year to play. And now, you know, we're seeing the, the, the fruits of that labor and you get a better sense of, of, of where they're at. Here in St. Louis, we we got to see one of those guys. It was only for a game this uh, this past week, but Bobby Witt Jr., uh, the third baseman for the Royals, was uh, was just here in town. Is there a guy on this list that you are more excited to watch than than others right now, or is it a combination of them all? I think it's a combination of them all. I mean, they're all they're they're all you know so exciting. I mean, just looking at that at the top of the list, obviously, uh, you know what Bobby Witt. Junior can do even when he's not hitting that well, he can still impact the game. I think people have seen the defensive highlights at a position that he's not really played. Um, you know, he's played a little bit of third base, but uh, this is a guy if you told him to catch, he would do it. Um, one of the things that I like about a lot of these guys, uh, he and Julio Rodriguez especially have a, a certain passion. I think Julio's got a little bit more flair than, than Bobby does, but they both play with such unbridled joy and passion. Um, you know, Bobby Witt Jr. is the kind of guy who will spend his entire career being the first guy on and the first guy off the field. And, and you know, uh, in, in terms of coming to the dugout, he's going to put in the extra work. Uh, anyone who saw Julio Rodriguez during spring training knows that he plays uh, with uh, such joy. It's the way the game should should be played. And and then Spencer Torkelson, who got uh, got his his first big league homer uh, out of the way uh, uh, on Wednesday, I think it was. Um, you know, he's just such a special hitter. And um, the, if you ever get a chance to talk to that guy about hitting, it is, it, it's like a masterclass for a guy that young. So I, I'm excited to, to see 
any of all of them. And then you go down a little bit later and you get to see Hunter Green pumping, you know, hundred plus and, and, and striking out a bunch of guys in his big league debut. So it's been, it's been a fun opening week for sure. I, I know the Cardinals have them, uh, have the Reds next weekend. Um, yeah. So in about two, I haven't looked at how far ahead to see if, if he lines up to, to face them at all in that, but that is, that's one too. I mean, when you look at how the, how, the Reds have kind of sold everything recently, but they still have, you know, you still have that top guy coming through the system and kind of see how they'll use him over the, uh, over the next few years. Uh, they, they're just throwing him right in there as a starter, right? So they're, they're not kind of babying him in, in a reliever role, correct? No, yeah, he's a starter. I mean, there, there's no reason for him uh, to, to be a reliever. Certainly not yet. You know, there's some questions about, uh, you know, secondary stuff. Um, his fastball can get a little flat. Like in this first start, you kind of saw uh, the good and the things he can, needs to keep working on. Uh, he missed a ton of bats. He doesn't walk guys. He commands the baseball. The reason why he's starting is like hit the last fastball he threw in the fifth inning, 90 pitches in was over a hundred miles an hour. Like, and so you don't, you don't shorten that guy up and unless there are some other issues, but the fastball can flatten out at times. He gave up two homers in the fifth inning. Um, so he's going to have to continue to, to, you know, work down in the zone with his fastball. That's when it works best. They're sync on it then and use his secondary stuff. He, he has it, you know, the slider will flash plus and he's got a cutter and a change up, you know, so he, he's still learning. The, the crazy thing is, is that he, he's still only 22. You know, it's um, it seems like he's been around forever. He had Tommy John surgery and then there was the shutdown, but he's still super young. So he, he's going, he's going to figure it out. I'm sure they will be careful with his workload. Um, so he'll be a starter, but, if they use six starters, if they, you know, have him skip a start here and there so he can pitch all year, um, or if he gets to a certain, you know, hundred innings or whatever, they have determined the limit um, and then shut him down. They can do that. And, and they've got Nick Lodolo also is their, you know, their, their next best prospect, the, the lefty who uh, got knocked around a little bit, but he's a really smart pitcher and a plus competitor. He's, he's going to figure it out as well. And they, they kind of complement each other just because they're such, uh, such different kinds of pitchers. If, if you've ever gone to MLB Pipeline, uh, you've seen Jonathan's work there. And I, I know that especially when when it comes to the Cardinals, uh, fans are, are always crazy about who's next, who's up. <laughs> and I, I, I imagine that's the same for a lot of teams for that. But I, as I'm looking through the list here and you, you list it, one of the great things is you have the ETA on there to kind of show when to expect them, you know, because a guy like a Jordan Walker. With the Cardinals, I think there, there are fans that think that he should be thrown in there as the DH this year, but uh, reasonably, it's it's probably a 2024 type of uh, type of player when when you look at a guy like that. So when you look at this list and you kind of have these ETAs of guys that aren't there yet, when you have the ETA of 2022, and it's not a guy that's on a big league roster yet, when you watch games, how do you watch major league games and kind of see okay injuries or or guys struggling? knowing who's who's next in line yeah i mean it's always fun to sort of think about uh, in fact we're, we're working on a story right now where we uh, we're picking a, a prospect for each organization who's going to make an impact in 2022 um i'll tell cardinals fans without looking uh, i don't believe jordan walker is that player um you got a couple of really good players at triple a who are more likely to to impact the big league roster and, and matthew libertor and nolan gorman but uh, you know, we may be conservative with that 2024 since Walker made the jump to double a, uh, let's see what kind of, uh, you know, adjustments he makes, I, you know, could he be in the big leagues by the end of the year? I, I guess, I mean, I, I think that they'll err on the side of caution, but, um, because of the double a assignment, assuming he figures things out, then 2023 makes a lot more sense. And sometimes that just happens. Guys are, you know, uh, even though he's still only 19 years old. You know, they they kind of push the envelope and force the organization's hand. I don't think anyone would have thought when he was drafted out of high school that this was a guy who was going to be necessarily a, a quick mover. Um, but uh, he, he's proven to be a little bit more of an advanced hitter and he's getting to the power uh, more quickly, which is why he's already in double A. So uh, I think you'll probably see him in 2023. Uh, now, if he goes off, right, and then – forces him his way up to triple a could you see him in september i you know maybe um but again uh he's still so young uh let him get his reps and uh and and, and you'll see him probably at some point next year 
I think that's, you know, something like that. You you look at uh, uh, Juan, uh, Juan Yepes, who last year, I don't think, you know, still today is number six in the Cardinal system, according to uh, your, the, the MLB pipeline rankings. But he was a guy that last year impressed the team so much. I, I think people forget he was on that wild card game roster last year he was he was listed he was flown out to LA with the team didn't play but he was still on the roster and would have made his major league debut if he would have pinch hit in uh in that game and that's a guy that I that people are looking at but you know I don't know when especially behind Albert Pujols this year as far as the DH goes and, and Paul Goldschmidt at first base that's a guy that a lot would have to happen for him to make his his debut Right. And a lot of it, it's not just, is a guy ready? It's, well, where is he going to play? Now, I think the thing with Juan Yepes is that, you know, I don't know that anyone projects him to be a superstar or even an everyday player. So there could be the the circumstance where he's called up to, to play more of a bench role, you know? Mm-hmm. So he'd get called up, say, ahead of a Nolan Gorman, who's only going to get called up if he's going to play. Uh, regularly, and granted, different positions and things like that. I saw Juan Yepes in the fall league, and I'm pretty convinced he can hit uh, at the big league level. The question is where, uh, you know, how are you going to get him into the lineup? And you mentioned some of the log jam there, but I could see him coming up, moving around a little bit, you know, give a guy a day off here. He, he, he has played, you know, virtually everywhere. He's never going to win a gold glove at any of those positions, but, you know, it's more of like an offensive minded utility guy, as opposed to a, a guy who's really good defensively, uh, you know, at a bunch of positions, but uh, I could see him forcing his way into, into the lineup. But even if it's just playing a couple times a week and pinch hitting, I, I think they would be willing for him to, to fill that role. He's not that kind of level of prospect where, uh, y- y- you know, you don't want to call him up and have him sit. I think, you know, he's going to be a role player when all is said and done. It's funny you mentioned the gold gloves because we know how many gold glove caliber guys are at the major league level right now for the Cardinals. But when you look at their list, at their top prospect list, who on that list would be next to be that next gold glove defender? Or are they just a bunch of hitters on, on there? Hmm. I don't do the Cardinals list, so um, but I think the guy that probably – jumps out the most is uh, Ivan Herrera, um, who is the, you know, sort of heir apparent, I think, behind the plate. Um, You know, one of the problems with, you know, especially behind the plate is, yeah, you want a good defender, you have to hit. And, he you know, he struggled last year. I think he has it in him. Um, You know, I've talked to him a time or two. I think he's got the kind of the right makeup and head on his shoulders that you want for a big league regular. And, you know, he's not Yachty because no one is, but he's, you know, an above average defender with a really good arm. He works well with pitchers. Um, So that would be a guy that, uh, that I would point to as, uh, as, as a, as a potential, uh, if not gold glove winner, then gold glove caliber type of player. What is, uh, what is it going to take for Matthew Libertor to make his big league debut? What are some things he, he needs to figure out from what you've seen or heard about him? I think he just, uh, you know, last year um, he, he struggled for, for the first part of the year and then kind of started to figure things out. Uh, I know he's only made a couple starts so far this year, so you don't want to read into to anything, you know, anything too much. People forget, I mean, he's been pushed really aggressively. You know, he was the fact that he was in AAA last year was a, a little, you know, was a little surprising. Um, he's got really good feel. Um, he doesn't have like a true out pitch. I think if maybe committing to one of the breaking balls more than the other, or, t- you know, if, say if he tightens up the slider, um, that, you know, that could give him a true out pitch. Uh, cause he's got enough stuff and he's got four pitches. They're all above average. He commands them well. So I think it's just, he's going to get in a groove and then it's going to be a matter of need at the big league level, which, you know, no major league team has ever gone through a year of needing only five or six starters. So um, he's going to get a chance at some point this year, I'm pretty sure. And then it's going to be a question of that. I think that secondary pitch that he can go to off of his fastball to, to miss bats. And that's going to be whether that's going to help determine whether or not he's like a really solid, say number four starter or a guy who might be more of a, a number two, you know, and I think he has an enemy again, he's only 22 years old um, and he's super smart. So I, I think he is going to figure it out and be more of that front half of the rotation kind of guy when all is said and done. 
there uh I, I, how would you um I, I guess recommend people follow some of these minor leaguers uh, what's the best way to uh, outside of reading your work what's the the best way to kind of follow these uh, these guys and see some of the other ones not outside of the uh, the cardinal system yeah i mean you, if you if you go to mlb.com slash pipeline that's where all of our prospect stuff is of course you can go to the minor league site milb.com um you know there are tons of teams that offer streaming you can watch most of these guys now on milb.tv um some of those games are actually going to be featured on mlb.tv as like a free game kind of deal so keep an eye out for that uh you know but uh as we you know continue to try to to push the young players um but those are those are the those are the two main places and you know if you're not following at mlb pipeline on twitter um then then you're missing out on a lot of prospect coverage you can follow him on Twitter at Jonathan Mayo, and like you said, at MLB Pipeline is also where you can uh, where you can go and find out when when Nolan Gorman and Matthew Libator and and other Cardinal prospects are going to be making their uh, debuts or how they're doing in the minor leagues. Jonathan, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Anytime, Joe.